Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. So, I thought we'd talk about Donald Trump's destiny. You know, is, is this what his soul is intended to do? Is he leading the life that his soul, his soul was intended to, to lead? And uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But um, yeah, Donald Trump, is, is, he, is this what he's supposed to be doing? Okay, so it seems to me that all our souls have a purpose. And if they do, uh, then are we following that purpose? And of course, we have free choice. So we make the choices we want to do along the path of our life. And uh, But I really believe that, that we can't make unuseful choices. Even if we make the choice, it doesn't necessarily further our soul's uh, education, if you want to say it like that. The, whatever choice we make is uh, useful and is used in some kind of a way. That's just what I think. And so let's see if Donald Trump is using his... Uh, his life to um, uh, further his soul's uh, education um, and then we'll think of some other questions along the way should be interesting so this is one of my all-time favorite uh, decks so this is the Smith Wake a uh, tarot deck the centennial edition and uh, there's two boxes here and I'll explain what happened is uh, when I was ordering uh, uh, this uh, deck um, I think I think it was Amazon I'm not 100% sure but um, it wasn't clear that, that one of the things I was ordering was just a deck of cards, and the other thing I was ordering was a commemorative set. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about them separately. So the cards themselves are terrific. So these are, as you may have heard me say, if you watch some of my videos and watch me use these cards, uh, these cards are the um, supposed to be the uh, most true to the original artwork of Pamela Coleman-Smith. This is her initial, Pamela Coleman Smith. Uh, th these are the closest to her original artwork or interpretation that she and um, and uh, uh, Wait uh, came to agreements on for the way they would be depicted. Before I turn these over, I'm going to tell you. So one of the things I love about cards is when you, there's something special you can use the cards for, a special way you can identify with the cards that's only secret to you. Maybe I shouldn't like that, but I do like that. For instance, uh, these cards, you can tell from the back of these cards whether they are upright or whether they are inverted before you flip them over. And here's how. In this uh, little um, uh, flourish here, uh, it's almost a rose and a rose. It reminds me a little bit of the Tudor rose, but it's, it's not quite that. But uh, if you are looking at this card, the back of this card, and you see this little leaf is, is sort of pointing in front of this signature, then you know that this card, when you flip it over, is going to be upright. However... If you see that the leaf is pointing behind the signature, you know that this card is going to be inverted. So see, a quick glance, it's not very obvious to you. But once you look at it for a minute and you know that secret, now you know what's going to happen when you turn this card over. So let's use an example. This one is pointing um, before the signature, so we can see that this card is in the upright position. This one is pointing after the signature, and you can see that it's in the inverted position. So, so there you go. Now, the cards themselves are great. I mean, I love the coloring of the cards. They've got kind of a, a grayish, um, a brownish gray overtone, almost a misty, kind of a London fog kind of a feel to the overall. It's like someone painted the cards and then went back and did a treatment on them to make them look kind of... So I'm not, I don't know if that's how Pamela Coleman-Smith uh, created the art. I haven't seen her original art for this, obviously. Um, I'm sure some people have. But, um, but that's what's great about these cards. It kind of gives them a built-in patina. It's not real. You know, it's fake, but it still makes them nice and mystical. And so uh, that's what's interesting about these cards. Now, the um, at first I was disappointed that I had ordered two um, sets of the same cards, but then um, I understood that it was a good thing. And I'll show you why that is. Okay, so now this is the commemorative set of the Pamela Coleman-Smith uh, artist of the Rider Waite Tarot deck, uh, featuring the Smith Waite Tarot Centennial Edition deck, which is this. So uh, it comes in this amazing, amazing container. I mean, I can't even really call it a box. It's, it's like a beautiful showcasing a lifetime of artwork by Cam Pamela Coleman Smith. And um, so it's really cool. And wait till you see how it works. So you open this treasure chest up, and you've got this beautiful uh, finish here, and you've got wonderful little tabs where you can pull back the uh, the covers 
and see what's inside. And what is inside is a, a pack of the cards. Uh, and in truth, what's happened is um, these were the cards that were wrapped up inside this box. And uh, these cards uh, came in that box. But um, I got this first. And so I wanted to use the cards. And so I opened it up. And oh, look at that. And I don't like that. This has to be tucked down in there. So there's a couple things that aren't perfect. But uh, so I took the cards out of here, opened them and started using them. And then the other cards came and I realized, oh, well, I can make this a complete set if I put these in here. What's in here? Of course, you have the cards. And uh, then you have a nice little bag uh, to keep them in if, uh, if that's how you're going to keep your cards. And so many people do. But uh, I have just chosen to try to leave these cards in kind of a pristine condition. And then on this side is where all the treasure happens. The first thing you have is this booklet, The Artwork and Times of Pamela Coleman Smith, Artist of the, Tarot, Tarot, of the Rider Waite Tarot Deck by Stuart R. Kaplan and Lynn uh, Arjo, I suppose. So this is who wrote this book. In this book, it tells you all about, uh, you know, not all about, but it's, 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 it's a very good information about Pamela Coleman Smith. It's a lot of her art that's not related to tarot and explanations of how that art came to be. I mean, this is just a fascinating book. And I love it. I love it a lot. So there's that. The next thing that was in here, are, these are actually postcards. Okay. So these are postcards. And all of these are the art of Pamela Coleman Smith. So, uh, and then this book talks about these postcards and why they come to be. And they all have a very interesting uh, story. So, which I won't go into now. But if you think you'd like to know, you should order these cards. So, very interesting uh, stuff here. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay. Next thing you're going to get is you get some uh, larger pieces that uh, this is Pamela Coleman Smith, who I understand like to be called Pixie uh, as a nickname, and she's a lovely person. This um, is uh, someone that she knew, a, a stage uh, actress at the time, and um, and there's even a little uh, message down here. The the name of this person is Mistress Page, and then you are a you are Mary, so am I, ha ha, uh, Ellen Terry. So uh, I'm not sure now, but the, the book explains all of this to you. Then you get, uh, this is an example of just some black and white work she done for, for, I don't know what, it doesn't tell you on here, but it does tell you in the book. And then this is some more examples of what she might have done for playbills or uh, other way. You know, artists have to make a living, so they use their talent of making art to uh, sell and, and do other things. So love, love, love everything that came with this. And um, amazing. Now, the final thing, and I've, I've lost a little uh, ribbon, but also this uh, has a ribbon here that, that helps you pull everything out, which is so smart. It's so good. I don't know who thought of it first, but it's a great... Uh, use of that. And then you have here the actual uh, pictorial key to the tarot. So some of you may have seen me using uh, this book, which is the pictorial key to the tarot by weight. And uh, so this is just another uh, representation of that, but just in a different book. And it all comes in here. The one thing that you're missing here, I don't think the cards are in this book. No, the pictures of the cards uh, aren't in here, but it's terrific. Everything else is true to that first book. Uh, this one, however, which I bought separate from an uh, online bookstore, uh, does have uh, depictions of the cards in it, as you can see. So that's very useful. I use that all the time. So very handy to have. And then finally, like so many of these uh, decks, this gives you some examples of some spreads you can use and how you might read them. And so everything, everything, everything about this, um, this package uh, is exactly um, the best that you'd want to get. In a, in, a, in a gift. Got, this is the one little misgiving here. Maybe I'll, I'll work on that later. But um, so nice. So that's been the tour of these cards. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Okay, so we're going to ask the question about Donald Trump. Is he following the best path for his soul's uh, advancement? Okay, because it seems like he has had the opportunity to do some very big things in this life, and uh, perhaps uh, that's by choice. Uh, also, I've always said I feel like he's got some sort of a sixth sense, some sort of an intuition, and I'll bet you if you spoke to him, he'd say the same thing. And uh, But it's like an undeveloped, it's like an accidental um, gift, like being right-handed or left-handed. So, let's see. <laughs> if the cards can tell us if he's following the best path for his soul and uh, let the cards speak. So we can take six cards right off the top. It's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, we'll save these for later because we still have to finish the Skeletic Cross. And we're going to look for the signifier. Okay, Trump's life. Is he 
following some inspired path. The signifier for this uh, reading then is the Three of Cups. And the Three of Cups really speaks to us of um, compassion, celebrations. It seems an odd uh, signifier for me, but of course I have a negative impression of this person. So regarding his life's path, the signifier is the Three of Cups celebrations. So you could consider that his life has been, um, you know, a series of triumphs, certainly in his mind and certainly monetarily. So let's see where that takes us. The challenge to that is going to, ah, judgment. Now we're getting there. So judgment tells us that these celebrations are challenged by the judgment. And this is obviously a um, another worldly uh, judgment that we're going here. So it looks to me like this is a conflict. These celebrations are being judged. Uh, the basis of this reading then is look at this. So this is the nine of wands and the nine of wands is being embattled. Okay. Lots of issues happening along the way, but this, uh, this uh, fighter here, he's got another plan, another issue, and he's not going to be held back. He's looking at these other issues almost with disdain and, uh, like, you know what? These are in my way. I'm going to keep on going. So it looks like he's getting lots of choices to overcome maybe some, some, some negative karmas. And um, I don't know that he's learned the lesson. The uh, past of this reading, then, is the star. So the star is enlightenment. Um, let me use my little cheat sheet over here. Uh, it's enlightenment. It's uh, seeking answers, um, being inspired, uh, guidance, faith. So the star uh, in the past uh, it could represent uh, past lives, perhaps, or just the past of this life, but seeking guidance and um, let's see what the sky of this reading tells us. So the sky of this reading is the hanged man, so he's suspended. So it looks to me like whatever the challenges are that uh, his, he's having the opportunity to, to karmically balance are, are kind of being suspended. You know, he's in a state of, of, of you know, trying to look at things from another way, or his soul at least looking at things from another way. I don't think this is a conscious um, effort on his part. So there's that, the hanged man. And then the uh, likely outcome of the first part of this for the question of, is he following his soul's path, is, look, being being offered a great big um, offer of value. So he's getting this chance over and over and over again in this life to make uh, choices that will advance uh, his soul, I think. So let's see. Let's just ask the question, is uh, uh is he making the correct choices to advance his soul? What is the self of that question? Is he making the correct choices to advance his soul? The uh, uh, self of that is the Knight of Pentacles. So he's a fighter. He's taking his worth for what he believes it is, and he's fighting, fighting, fighting to, uh, to move it forward. That is who he is. He is a fighter for what he perceives as his worth. The uh, environment that that's in, however, is the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands is, is the... She is the ruler of planning, of motion, of forward-moving uh, uh, ideas. And so uh, this knight is moving forward, and this queen is putting um, plans and uh, ideas in his path to overcome. So he's getting every chance, it seems to me, to overcome uh, these karmic imbalances. The hopes and the fears for that are, look at that, the Seven of Wands. And the Seven of Wands is uh, recognizing that you have all these obstacles, these plans that you're embattled with, and uh, and you continue to uh, continue the fight. But I want you to notice here, this uh, fella, he's got one boot, he's got one shoe. So he's not on the best footing to get this done. So I don't know. And then the likely outcome of all of this, uh, then, is justice. So what happens is the karmic uh, justice will always win. So, um, you know, whatever you haven't learned, it's going to come back and you're going to keep on going until you balance the scales and get to the truth. So I don't know. That's how I see it. So that's my idea uh, for this reading. And it was a quick one, wasn't it? So that was pretty interesting and it was pretty fast. I didn't expect it to play out that quickly and kind of clearly for me anyway. Um, and, you know, there's always a chance that this is skewed. There's probably the likelihood that this is skewed, as a matter of fact. So you got to see my uh, cell phone that, uh, videos from the top down. Um, but anyway, so it started out with, um, with uh, celebrations, uh, being offered uh, the chances uh, to, uh, to have these emotional 
uh, compassionate celebrations, and they mean a lot to these people. But it was in the uh, it was uh, challenged by, of course, um, judgment. So each celebration brings with it a judgment to see if this has been a celebration uh, to f further uh, your soul, I suppose. The um, the um, base of that, of course, is the Nine of Wands with lots of battles, and this embattled uh, warrior just keeps on fighting. He keeps on pushing forward. And then the uh, the um, past of this, of course, is the star. And the star is just seeking guidance uh, and uh, validation. Okay, uh, In the sky of that reading, then, was the hangman. So it appears to me like his, his soul is just in a state of suspension um, in this regard. Uh, I would feel like it's even going backwards, but the soul doesn't go backwards. The soul always progresses forward, and any motion or movement or action that we take is used up uh, uh, much like uh, uh, a thrifty cook uses every bit of the ingredients in front of them and doesn't waste anything, maybe in another recipe. So those uh, 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 issues that don't further our soul, soul uh, further other people's souls, and perhaps to a great extent. But then uh, the likely outcome of all of that was the um, uh, a big offer of value. Always another offer of value. See what you do with it this time. And then, uh, so we get to the last four cards, and we find out that uh, his self is defined kind of as the Knight of Pentacles, a hard-fighting knight. He's going he's gonna to have a hard fight for his worth. He's not going to give up. And he's in the environment of this Queen of Pentacles, who's going to keep putting issues uh, in front of him to overcome and see how he does on that. And uh, the hopes and the fears of that then are the uh, Seven of Wands, which is telling us that um, you know there's always another fight. He's not on very short footing when you consider his uh, his, his shoes are different, and uh, he just continues to have these issues pop up for him to battle with. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing is, of course, uh, justice. And justice will always win. The karmic balance will always uh, be there to be corrected or to be balanced. And if you don't do it this time, you're going to do it another time. That's how I see it. So that was uh, the reading for today. I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. If I'm not doing anything tomorrow, come back and we'll do it again. Ciao for now.